Good afternoon. I'm Danny Beamer from Roanoke, Virginia. Guys, I'm the regional when, when we're working down here, you're going to all have to have a Virginia, seat, Maryland, sit down on the DC, side, and West just Virginia. so that they're watching the little uh, kids rather than you guys. Yeah. So if you could get everybody off, it's brilliant. Players and coaches. Our presenters are Steve Rudder, Noddy. who's the coach Paul. education manager for Noddy. FA. He holds his UEFA Pro license, and he also holds his NSCAA Premier Diploma. Noddy. We also have Paul get your Holder. players off, mate. Where's Paul? Paul Holder, who has coached extensively in Europe, and he's a national coach for the youth programs for the FA. And we have uh, Mark Kearney, who is the skills leader for the FA, the team leader for the skills development for the FA. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Let's please give them a warm welcome. Great presenters that we got today. Just to give you an indication of the work that you're going to see, um, Mark is a specialist in fives to elevens development because there's a, there's a special set of skills that you need if you are going to coach and work effectively with younger players. Paul is a sort of hybrid where he's worked through the whole range of youth levels and my experience really has been at the older age groups and in game related sort of work, so 11 aside football, tactics and strategies, that sort of area. What we're going to do is three 25 minute sessions based around a common theme and the theme we've chosen is turning and we're going to look at how you can work appropriately around turning across the different groups the sort of work that you might need to do and the key things that you might need to identify. So for example, Mark is going to start with the younger players. Lots of them have ambitions to be soccer players. Many of them as they get older will disappear into other sports and other areas. So a lot of the work that we would do with the younger age groups, whilst looking at turning as a technical consideration, would be things like developing their movement patterns, their physical literacy skills, their visual awareness, their ability to work and recognize visual triggers. So that's the way it will work. In between each session, we'll need a couple of minutes just to change over the organization. Um, whilst Mark is working so that he can just concentrate on working with the players, Nick Levitt, who is the head of the skills coaches teams nationally, will just link into you around the sort of rationale for why Mark is doing the things that he's doing. Is that okay? So at the end of each block, you may, as we're changing over, you may have a couple of minutes where you want to ask some questions. That's fine. Fire the questions out. We'll deal with the questions, why we're setting up, and then we'll move on to the next block of work. <coughs> okay? So I'll hand you over to Mark Kearney, who's the team leader of the skills coaches in Leicestershire, and Nick Levitt. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so as Steve said, the start of the session is going to be on turning, and... Mark's just going to be working with the young players to begin with to look at really setting the learning environment so they're comfortable to be able to go out and express themselves and actually play without being worried about it whatsoever. So early on we look at very much setting the scene. So they all know each other but the young people, they shake hands, they tell each other how they're doing, if they've had a good day and as soon as we hit that moment the players are then ready to learn. And as you can see now, Mark's kind of tapping into some of the visual learners that we might have within the group. So as well as those people that can understand and take all the information on board by Mark telling them, some of these young players here might be better by seeing it written down. So just having a simple bit of flip chart paper, the information presented to them in a nice clear way, Mark can now kind of show them the area that we're working in, highlight how the game's going to work, so those that see it better will take a really good grasp of that as well. So we're just starting to tap into some different learning styles of the young people that are going on. So very early on, straight into a warm-up, but as early as possible trying to bring a ball into the practice as well. Doesn't have to be football related at this stage. Our philosophy is very much around movement skills of young players at that age group. Now those movement skills could be generic movement skills that they're looking at. It could be agility, coordination, changing direction nice and quick. 
could be a bit of balance in there. All the core generic skills that go towards making somebody an athlete of whatever they want to do. So all the different things that they're doing at the moment, changing direction, bending and stretching, picking things up, is all part of the warm-up as well. And just kind of get them switched on to learning. So key information that Mark's just given the young people there are some of the words that we want to kind of use to tap into the way that they're learning. So one of the most vital words that Mark said within that whole little bit of go off, travel with the ball on the bottom of your foot, side of your foot, top of your foot, was using the word explore. Can we get the young players to find ways of doing it for themselves? We're trying to get out of the generation of coaches that we've got in England at the moment that are very coach-led. They will tell the young players how to do everything and the kids never make any decisions for themselves. Hence, we get a generation of players that can't solve problems, they can't make decisions for themselves. So very much the language that the coaches will start to use now at this age group is, can you go and explore? So a little player here, a little bit of a flick as he's going around. Fantastic. So again, we're looking at the way that the, the information is presented for Mark to the players there. He's trying to tap into what do they understand at that age. We very quickly lose sight of these lads are 9 and 10. And actually the information that we put across them has got to be really clear and concise and football jargon free. We're very good at using football jargon. So Mark explained it to them there. We want them to recognise space. How can you recognise space? So they answered the question. He said, well... Imagine you've got four gears on your car. One is going really slow and four's really quick. What different gears can you use as you're going around? So particularly within the program that we work at the moment in our 5 to 11 program, a lot of our coaches that work in the bottom end, the real kind of five, six, seven-year-olds, will talk about football through stories. They'll talk about Dora the Explorer and SpongeBob SquarePants in a way to kind of interact with the kids and help them kind of visualise and picture it at their age group, and that's really key. So now we're still looking at different movement patterns, still looking at moving around. So we're also talking about now, can you move in different directions and different ways with the ball? So rather than move just straight, so we're looking at moving in different directions, round cones, backwards, sideways, all game-specific movements that they're likely to do as they progress and start playing into different games as well. So a little bit of moving the ball with the sole of the foot, a little bit of a turn as well. So although the theme is turning, we're starting to see a lot of these turns come out in the session without even being prompted. Because naturally, as soon as they get to a brick wall, they turn and try and find a different way of doing it. And this little experimentation and trying different things uh, this age group is absolutely key to their learning. Give them the freedom to go and explore and try and do things on their own without being told what to do. So the practice that we're moving on to now is to start to get, to get the players to have a think about what they need to do with their body in order to 
turn when they receive the ball. So the topic was turning as the learning objective at the start. And it was, can we help them understand what to do before they receive the ball to help them turn? So p part of extending the warm-up is to kind of put into practice some of the movements that they're going to have to do with their body in order to be able to do that as we're playing. So just in relation to the playing area now, there's five different squares set up in the box. They're different shapes, different sizes. So as the young players move around different areas, they're going to have to start to take in the information and work out, well, if I'm in a smaller space or a bigger space, what happens? So all the different sensory information that's going on in there, the brain needs that kind of high level of sensory challenge in order, in order for it to develop. So we've got little areas marked out around. We've got a big blue square that marks signposting the players off to here at the moment. So because you've got a big area, you've got a lot more time to adjust and see things going on. In the middle, there's a triangle. So again, different shapes and sizes. How is that going to affect compared to different players that we've got at the moment? So as you can see from the players themselves, very quickly, some will understand it and some won't. One of the key things at this age is, it's okay if they don't understand it straight away. When we start to do some of the bits with the ball upon receiving to turn, some of the players will get it quickly. Some of them won't. But one of the key things and what science is saying to us now is, it's about long-term player development. The fact that they don't understand it today is fine. Making mistakes is fine, and it's all part of that learning process. But we as coaches have to create that learning environment so that they feel comfortable in order to make mistakes. Because if they don't and they're scared of a coach hammering them if they get it wrong, then we've got some problems. So it's all about making that learning environment good so that they feel comfortable in order to do that. So although they're finding their own ways of doing it, we're still giving them a little bit of educative feedback. So some good information gone into the player in the middle here. What can you do with your feet? And he's shown him, this is what I can do with my feet. Brilliant, go and have a go and see what happens. So it's not about you must be in this position to do it, you must be in that position to do it. Because what works for one person is going to be different from another. So the way he's doing it now, it's working for him. So a little bit of the space recognition part as well. Can you go and find a different square to work in? What are you going to find when you go somewhere different? How is that going to be different to the size of the space that you're working in before? What are you going to have to do differently when you get there? So the question was asked from Mark, what do you notice about the size of the spaces? And they come back and tell you that they're different. So a little progression now that we're starting to do, and it's starting to build up the tempo of what they're doing in the middle of the square. So we're starting to put in a little bit of a chase game. So as well as the development of the person in the middle having to work a little bit harder to see what's going on around them, you start to get a little bit of agility of the players on the outside. So when they start moving and a little bit of chase that's going on, and the stopping and changing direction, they'll all be moving nice and quick. Good change of direction. So we're also working on our, our uh, agility as they're moving around there now as well. But the player in the middle is having to work harder to see both players now.
So if you look at the practices there, there's all sorts of different things going on now with the different groups. So we've got one group in the bottom corner there that are just starting the practice now because they're starting to take on that information. So within the three, within the, all, the, all the players that we've got there, you'll probably find three fairly distinct groups. You're going to have the, the average group that understand it and they start playing. They get themselves going and they're off and running and they'll get going. You'll find a group, this group here in the middle of working pretty hard, understanding it as well. So you're going to find a group that are going to be forging ahead. These are the ones that actually, unless we start to change the activity and challenge them as individuals, they're the ones that we might lose if it's, if it's too easy for them. So Mark will start to change the activity for some groups. So as well as the, the average group and the high flyers, you might have a group of young people that might be struggling. So again, meeting the individual needs, how do we go about challenging them so that they're working at a level that's applicable for them? So one of the ways that Mark would kind of progress that is the high flyers could have a ball in the middle, so again, they're working a little bit harder at shifting their body and shifting the ball at the same time. So we're starting to get a bit of technical information coming out of the session now as well. So Mark's just kind of probing and asking a few questions. Where, when you're in the middle, what are you doing with your body? How are you changing your feet? What's happening to your shoulders? So those little bits of technical information are starting to come out. So we've already kind of tapped into some of the physical work that's going on. So the development of agility, a bit of coordination skills from the warm-up are starting to come out. And as a coach, using that to observe what your players can and can't do in terms of their movement patterns is really important. So Mark's always tapped into some of the physical work that's going on. So we're starting to get a little bit of technical information out as well. What do you need to do with your body? Don't tell me, go and find out, was one of the questions that Mark asked early on. So again, it's not coach-led giving them the information all the time. It's can you find a way yourself and see what happens? And then Mark's just brought them all back into the middle for a little bit of consolidation on, well, what do you find? What difference does it make if you do certain things? So as, the, as they're in now, they're all in little groups of three, solving the problem for themselves. They're finding out. It's not Mark as the coach saying, this is the way you do it. One of the most powerful ways that young people learn is from each other. And that's exactly what they're doing now. So the social aspect of football as well so particularly at this age, they're still starting to develop communication skills and the life skills side of it. They're starting to have a chat. Well, that worked out really well. Let's try that. And this worked out. So socially, they're starting to solve the problems without the coach saying, yep, this is the way to do it. And it's a bit of a culture change from how we've worked in coaching. We're always used to giving them the answers, giving them the answers. But now we're starting to help them find their own way out as well. Yeah, he's done 13. Yeah, yeah. for 20 minutes in total, so we should be okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a minute behind. So they've been set off on another practice now. Can they find ways of moving the ball through the middle player to each end? So again, with all the different shapes and sizes of areas that they're working within, they're all going to start to do things very, very differently in order to do it. So the group that we've got here now in a long, smaller, uh, a long, thinner area, starting to do differently. So, are they doing the same in all the squares? Well, they're probably starting to do different things. But what they're starting to do 
is pattern the movement of the ball into the middle there. Nice little turn and he's played out the other way. So one of the things as you look around the different groups now, all working in their different spaces, is actually they've all been given the same task. Go and find a way of playing through the middle player to turn and play the ball out the other side. And they're all finding their own ways of doing it. There's not one clear way that uh, everybody's doing it, which is normally the coach's way of doing it. Historically, what we've always done is we're going to teach you a turn and this is the way you do it. And textbook, if that's not right to the coach's demonstration, then the young player gets told they're wrong. But actually, that might work for them. So how we're starting to do things now is about what meets the needs of the individual. So Mark's now starting to ask a few game-related questions. Why do I need to see both ways? Why do I need to stand with my body in a certain way? Where would I do that within a game as well? One of the important things that we, uh, we try and get across to our coaches is when they're asking questions, if the answers they get back aren't quite right, they're not wrong. It's an understanding of that's where that young person is at. That's their knowledge base if they answer in a certain way. So we might b normally just say, no, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Yeah, brilliant. That's right. But actually, we need to take on board the information that the person that said, no, that's wrong, that's their understanding as well. So there's something nice and clear that Mark needs to take on board as well, that if they don't quite get the answer right first time, we need to help them find the way as well. So the last question that Mark's asked now, again, is put across some technical information, a little bit of what happens if you do with your body. But the, the question that Mark has just posed them and told them to go and find out is, how many touches does it take to turn? Now, some of the players, and the one in the middle of this group here, the first player early on in this group received it with his back to where he was wanting to pass it, took four touches, turned and played the ball out. But what we'll start to see now is some of the players might take no touches to turn at all. They might just let the ball come across their body and go and play out the other side without even touching it. So they're starting to have to take on information now that what's the weight of the pass coming in towards me? Is it going to let me turn without touching it? Where is the opponent in relation to that? So as the game would progress and you're starting to build into a little bit of skill acquisition uh, with defenders in there and it's a little bit more opposed, they're going to start to have to take into account, well, what way do I turn depending on where other people are around me? At this age still, in, the, in terms of the spatial awareness, it's starting to still discover the space that they're playing in. Some of the players will pick it up quite quickly. So in the middle there, he, uh, he turned first time. The next bit that Mark added on there is, as a player on the far end, if you've got the chance, can you run in and steal it? So the player in the middle now, not only have they got to look at turning, but they might have to start to think, well, how do I know what's behind me? So some of them will start to check the space behind them now before they turn. So if the player is creeping into steel, can they recognise then which way to turn and which, which way uh, the defender's coming from? The reality of it is, though, these young players in 20 minutes might start to get a grasp of what we're doing. 
by the end of the session, all of them will have an understanding of how they can turn. Most of them will be able to understand what they need to do with their body. And some of them will be able to turn straight away and do it. And that goes back to the three groups that we were talking about. The group of average where most people will sit, the ones at the bottom that need a little bit help to try and catch up, and the ones that are forging ahead that still need to be challenged as well. So within these five little areas, Mark will start to differentiate the practice to meet the needs of the players. Some of them might have balls, some of them might make the space bigger or smaller, just to challenge them as individuals as well. So again, what you can see in terms of the area, one of the clear things that Mark has got laid out there is a little equipment box, just for a little bit of organisation so that we try and get the majority of balls in the right place. So we've done a little bit of technique work. Can you understand what to do when you receive the ball or you're about to receive the ball to turn and play on a different direction? So Mark started to develop that now into a little bit of skill acquisition. So we're now playing in the whole of the area, but the five boxes are still in place. The aim of the game is, can you play into a box, receive and turn out the other way? So a little turn to play out and receive the other way. So the numbers that Mark started with here... 10 versus 2, it's still basing the success on the players getting the chance to turn and play out. So we've got two defenders in orange. Their task is to try and intercept the ball rather than just get it and whack it out the area. So it's lots of opportunities now for the players to change direction when they receive the ball. Can they turn and play out in a different way? But again, Mark might start to change the practice to meet the needs of the players. So if they started to be really good by adding more defenders in there or changing the size of the space to make it smaller, it will start to put more pressure on the, how quick the brain's working for the young players in there. And again, in order to make it easier, Mark might change the practice. One of the things that we could do to slow the oranges down is just give them a ball. So rather than them just running around the area chasing the ball, giving them a ball at their feet to travel with and try and intercept, they've now slowed down because they're having to dribble their own ball and try and intercept. So in order to make the game easier, Mark might change that as well. And again, it's about meeting the needs of the players. How can we get them to achieve success within this practice? Good, ball to me. Good, off you go, play. Good, great turn. So even within the practice now, two balls working, Mark's still able to give that feedback. One of the things that we look at in the culture and coaching now in England is, can we let the game be the teacher? But we can't lose sight of the fact that we have to coach. We're there because we've got the knowledge to help players get better and Mark giving that little bit of educative advice and feedback in there, when the young players go away, we just need to give them the chance to reflect on it and assimilate some of the information that's going on. So this is just a little bit of consolidation to finish the session. It's a real snapshot of some of the age-appropriate work we're starting to do with young players. And Mark's feedback now is, how many touches? What did you find out when you went and had a go at that? Some of the players said one and two. Lad with the blonde hair here said, none, I don't need any. So they're starting to take on board that little bit of information. We've whizzed through this kind of practices that are going on here. And what we're going to start to do in the next practice now 
is build upon that. And Paul's going to take you through into a session with a group of under-14s that will really rack up the challenge in terms of the technical work that's going on and all the kind of contextual interference that's going on around you to try and take on board that information. Then he's going to take it into a bit more skill acquisition uh, just to finish off. So again, as we just said, just to consolidate and finish the session, learning from your friends, what have you learned today? What's the one thing that you're going to take away? Because all the information, we've probably put 20 minutes of information into them, they're not going to take much away. Because they, cognitively, they can't take on board everything that's gone on, just as much as adults can't anyway. So they're now going to focus on the one or two things that they can take away, so that next time, if they have to do turning, they can reflect on sessions that they've done previously and say, oh yeah, well, I might remember that one thing from sessions that have gone on before. So, what I'd like you to do is, could you give all the players a round of applause for taking part in the session? It's a nerve-wracking thing to come out and play in front of you guys. So they've done a really, really good job in the short space amount of time that we've done. So just to finish off there, we're going to shake hands and say goodbye to each other as well. And I'm going to pass you over to Paul for the next session. Questions? Questions? Yeah. I... Uh, just don't, don't pick up, pick up those orange ones, will you? How'd you put this on? Is that right? Thank you. Thank you. Is that coming through? Lads, 13s, come here please. Gather ball between three. Just while I'm gossiping, pass and move in this, this area here. Just pass and move for a bit. Off you go. Pardon? Can you hear me now? Oh, shit. And stop there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Uh, lads, listen, just stop there, stop there. Woo -woo. The area size, the area size is red cone to red cone. You're playing in the yellow bit there, yes? Do me, just do something. Everyone touch it, pass and move somewhere else and just turn somewhere at some stage. Go on, go. Stay there. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Lads, listen. Listen. Just stay still. Really good. As you get it here, if he's a yellow, just watch me a sec. Put the balls down. So it's just <whistles> should have a ball between three, so keep the balls between you. So yellow should have a ball, oranges should have a ball, blue should have a ball. Got it? So if you give it off if I get it, Zach, give it to me here. I'm just gonna whiz round and look for you, but I don't want you too close to me. So if you see me getting it, disappear. Go on. Go on. Make it hard for me. So if I get it here, yeah, disappear. Just look to see where he might be. Now as I get it, I want you to disappear from there because I know you're there. Yeah? Go on, where is it? Good. Move somewhere. Somewhere else. Give it to me now. Move, Zach. Good lad. Good. Good. Okay? Go on, go on. Carry on. Go, 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 go. Go.
and stay still. For me, that's not quick enough. So now, I want to see you moving, so give it to me, I'm going to find you. Ready? Give it to me. Move. Move. Good lad. Yep. Give it to someone else. I don't want it back. Good. Find me. Where am I? Where am I? Good lad. Okay. Off you go. Go. Come on, quicker. And stay still. Good. Come to me. Last one into me is, is got a problem. Last one to me has got a problem. Quick, come to me. Okay, watch what we do. Drop out of the area and we'll use blues. Yeah? Everyone else out here. Come on this side. Blues. All right, I want two of you outside the area. Yeah? And I'm going to be you. So drop out. Okay? Now, there are three boxes. One, two, here, here, and three, here. What I'm going to do, and you deliver it from outside, I'm going to get it here, I'm going to get through the box, and I'm going to look for you. But you're on the outside, and I don't want to see you there when I'm through there, okay? Yes. Good. Where are you? Good lad. As I go in there, I want you to come in and I'm going to go out. Find another box. Find another box. Good lad. Get through it. Get through it. Good. Hang on. Who are you finding? Me. Good. Find him. And relax. So you three, show me what happens. Zach, come in here. And play. Turn. Get in the box and turn. Good. Find your partner. Where is he? Get on the outside. Get on the outside, fella. On the outside, good. Good. And stop. Yeah, good. Who's coming in? Who's coming in? In you come. So you're going, but right out. Yeah, try it again. Go, go get it. Get in the box. Get through the box. Any box. Good lad. Find your third person. Good lad. Out you go. Find him. Where is he? Where is he? Good lad. Find him. On the outside. On the outside. Make sure you go on the outside. You ready? In you go. Go. You ready to start? Now, let me just explain something. Lads, this is a setup. Lads, you can go all the way back to here. So I'm going to make it easier for you by making this box very big. The aim of the game, the ball should be on the outside. So give it to one of your partners on the outside. Yep. On the outside of the yellow area. Yeah, out you go. Good. The aim is to just receive it, turn, and find someone on the outside, but use those boxes as a guide. Go. Go. See what happens. Go. Go. Good. Good. Find your third person. Good lad. Now, the big issues are... One, they come with existing knowledge of what they're doing. They would have played since they were five, six, seven. What stages do we go through in order for them to do what I'm asking them to do? The first thing is they need to learn the practice because they don't know the practice. So that's going to take a little bit of time. Also, what I'm looking for is a turning in and around that box. And they'll get it eventually. And stop still. Good lad. Watch this, lads. Just as you come in, go on the outside, Zach. Yeah? Give it back to him. And I'll be you. So drop out. Boys, watch me. Out you go. 
Yep, good lad. I'm going to look for you. What I'm going to do is hunt around here. If I can, I might touch it once and that gets me out of the box. It might be that I have to, t I have to touch it and I'm looking for you, so move, move. I have to touch it more than once to find him. Now, where should you be now? On the outside. Go on then, on the outside. Or pass it to me. And if the weight's right, I might leave it and then look for him on the outside. What do you do once the ball's gone out? Good lad. Now, you don't have to go to that box. as that one or that one. Go. Work it out for yourself. Go. Come on, move. Good lad. Good. Good. Out you go. Find yourself out. Good lad. Where is he? Good boy. Like that. Very good. Good. Find out where he is. Good. Should be on the outside. Two on the outside. Good lad. Good. Well done. Good. Good. And stop there. Come to me. Come to me, quick as you can. In you come. Really good. Come on. Now, let me explain something. What's the person out here looking to do? What's he practicing? Here. Yeah, give us a ball. Blues, I'll work with you. You come out. Yeah, I'll be you. Go near a box, Michael. Yeah, good. Now, just clock... Come out the box and receive it outside, and you've got to go across it. Where's your partner at the moment? Good lad. So at some stage, you've got to give it to him. Well, I want you to do is that ball moves in there to move, to make it a dip difficult. Now, where's, the best, where's it going to make it harder for him? In front of him or behind him? Good lad. Well, whichever way you want. Ready? As I pass it, I want you to move. 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 Good lad. Okay, out you go, Michael. Out you go. Look for me. Good. Where is it? Yeah, good. 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 Where are you? Good. 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 Yep. Good lad. Now, if you get the ball before you're on the outside, turn, take it out, and take it outside. Ready? Go. Make it happen. Make it work. Go. Make it work. Off you go. Good. Good. Good lad. Lovely little turn. Good. Good. Good, good, like it. Go quickly. Right, speed up. Speed this up. It's too slow. Speed it up. Make it go quicker. Don't have one touch, Michael. You can have more. Good, get out. Good lad, lovely. Sorry. Stay still. How many of you have used the outside of their foot? Hands up. Okay. How many of you used your heel? How many of you have left it and whizzed round? How many of you, yeah, have taken it round by your heel and do that? Now I want you to risk it a little bit. Bit of imagination. Go. Move. Little bit of imagination. Come on. Inside, outside of the foot. Yeah, good lad. Good, good. Come on, get through. Yoy, yoy. Love it. Go on, get through. Good, good little turn. Where is he? Find him. Where's your second partner? Good, good lad. Yeah, go on, move. Find him. Much better. Much better. <whistles> Stay still. You're absolutely brilliant. Now, you need to do something. How do I know where he is? Watch me. If I get it here, and I'm looking for you, how do I know where he is? So I'm going to have to check. But the thing is, I'm also going to have to check if someone's in there. Come in there. If he's in there already, I might have to take... Now move. Move somewhere else. Good. I might have to go past him and then look for him. So check that space. Go. Off you go. Move. Go on. Move. Move. Unlucky. Go on. Find him. Turn. Great little turn. Well done. Good. Go on. Get in there. Get in there. Good. Good. Lovely little... <whistles> Stay still. Watch this. Michael, go and do that again. Great stuff, Michael. Okay. Mike, use that part of the foot you used. 
Whichever way you want, you can go to him or him. Watch Michael. Come out, Michael. As I pass it to you, check that space behind you. And what part of the foot did you use? Good lad. Ready? Move. Move. Show me. Oh, that's good. great stuff. Well done. So he used the outside of his foot, but you got it in there last time. Come on. Experiment. Go. Move. Yeah, I love it. Good. Come on, keep going, keep going. Turn, turn, turn. Good little turn, well done. <whistles> Lads, stay there. Last little thing before we move on. Let me tell you, most of the turns at the moment are done with the inside of the foot. So give it, give it to him there. So if I'm looking for you, yeah, leave the ball there. Most of the turns done so far are with the inside. Experiment a little bit. You can, yep. Yeah, you can use the outside and you can use your heel. Now, I'm going to look for that now. Yeah, you don't need that ball, do you? Yep, ready? And go. Play. Come on. Come on, move. Yeah, good. Good lad. Get him out. Get out quickly. Where are you going? Make it hard for him. Lovely little turn. Good lad. Good. Swing. Good. And relax. Really good. Come over here. Come over here. Come on, over here. Everyone over this side. Quick. Let's have a ball. Okay. Blues, take your bibs off. Blues, take your bibs off. Take your bibs off, man. Yeah. Go on the outside of the area, anywhere you like. Have you got your gloves? Okay. Target man, put your thing on. Watch, I'm now going to put in a target man in the middle. Put the bib on. Lads, watch this, please. Give us that football, sir. Put the balls on the outside, sorry. Okay, watch. One, two, three, four, five. Yellow and oranges play together. You play together. Move from box to box. Go on, move. Go to another box. Good lad. Which one's empty? Go to another box. Which one's empty? Okay, good. Well done. Come in this area. Here. You ready? Come in, yellows. Come in, oranges. Yellows, oranges, come in. The aim of the game is this. You ready? If you've got the ball, you can use him inside the box. In you go. As a target and you play with the team with the ball, and you can use the goalkeeper. Are you ready? Catch it. Unlucky. If it's in your hands, you can catch it, yep. And you play with the team with the ball. If you see an empty box, what do you think you've got to do with it? What do you think you do with the empty one? Well, it's empty, drive through it. You score every time you get the ball in a box and out again. You ready? You ready? 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 So it's yellows and oranges versus greys. Ready? Play. Good. Good lad. Good. And relax. Yeah, good. Yep. Into me. No problem. If the ball goes out of play and we don't know who it is, we'll start with you. You go with anyone you want. Go. Play. Anyone you want. Bibs or no bibs? Play on. Play on. Good. Good. Yep. Play on again. Now what you'll notice, and I'm not going to do it for them, to be honest, is this is redundant. So, looking at... Play on. Watch the level of improvement in a minute. Okay, keep playing. Don't worry. Keep playing. Let's see if they can work it out. Play it. Play on. Good. And stay still. Okay. Lads, how do you score? 
You either dribble through an empty one or you give it to him and get it back. Yep. You ready? If I were you, I would look very closely at where the empty boxes are. You ready? A new move. Ready? Go. Good. Good. Good lad. Where's the target? Good. Good. Well played. Keep playing. Good. And play with the team with the ball. Really good. 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 Keep playing. <whistles> Stay still. Magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Come into me quickly. Last one into me. And that includes you, Mr. Mr. Goalkeeper, sir. Okay. Now, is the game easy or hard? Easy to understand. Yeah? Do you understand the game? How do you score? Play into you who moves, leaving an empty space. If I were you, I would check that space to see if it's empty. You may not have to touch it at all to score. You ready? I'm looking for the clever turns. Come on, move. Spread out. Fan out and spread out. You ready? All eyes down for a full house. You ready? And play. Great turn. Well done. Brilliant. <whistles> Absolutely fantastic. What did he do? Realised the space was dragged. Dragged it round and scored. Brilliant play. Give it to me. Yellows, you're in the lead. And play. Move. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Was that my fault? Michael, don't blame me. That was you. You're blaming me. No, you're not. You ready, Mike? Play on. Play with who you want. And move. Move. Good. Good. Good boy. Good thinking. Good thinking. Unlucky. Yeah, give the ball. Oh, don't worry about the size of the ball. You can play with a tennis ball. Go on, carry on. Yeah, love it. Where's the space? Find the space. Good lad. Good thinking. You good boy. Unlucky. Good. There's a score. Brilliant play. Keep playing. Good. Play with the team with the ball. Let's go back to another target. Good lad. Lovely turn. Good. Got a plan. Got a great plan. If I were you, I would start thinking about playing around the outside rather than in here. And then when your moment is right, get in the middle. You can help them. Yep. Goalkeeper. Yep. You can also, I want to use the goalkeeper as often as you can. If you get it in your hands, throw it. Go on. Sling it. Good lad. If you get it at your feet, use your feet. Play. Yeah, move. Love it. Brilliant, sir. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Good lad. Good thinking. Go on, play on. Get out the cones. Good. Yeah, I love it. Excellent. Think of that. Good. Keep playing. Keep playing. Good. Keep playing. Keep playing. Good. Scored. All right, you've got the game. Michael, go and be a target. Michael, be a t put the blue bib on. Be a target. I think you'll be brilliant at this. You ready? Hey, 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 Okay, you can play. You're, you're brave enough to get it. Go on, play. Go on, play. Go on, play. Love it. Great turn. Great turn. Good boy. Well thought out. Well thought out. Move, Michael. Unlucky. Go on, play. 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 Where are you going? Not much space through there. Good. Good. Oh, magnificent. Think it. Love it. Keep playing. <whistles> Last one into me. Okay, come into me quickly. Come into me. I want you to watch the amount of turns they start to get now because suddenly they're learning the game. It's not about me, it's about them. How many? Two. One minute. Ready? Want to score on this? Ready? Who's the target? Look for the quality of the turns. I'm looking for the no-touch turn. The no-touch turn where you don't touch it at all shuts the game down. Play. Good lad. Oh, not like that. Think about it. <laughs> Magnificent. Think about it. Come on, keep playing. Keep playing. Good. Find those turns. Find those spaces. Find the spaces. Find Good boy. Good lad. Find the spaces. Unlucky. Get another ball. You've got 30 seconds. Priceless time. We'll play with this one. It's smaller. It's harder. Now, no touch turn. Try and score. 
Who's the, who's the target? You might help them by moving, Michael. Don't stay in that one, fella. Right, go. Move. Love it. Good boy. Oh, oh well done. Think, think your way through it. Well played. Oh, I like you. Oh, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? Good boy. Good lad. Good lad, Michael. Well turned. Great little turn. Think about it. Love it again. <coughs> Come over to me. Quick as you can. Come over. Okay. Tell you what. Ain't bad. Come in. Now, look at the beginning where no outside of the foot stuff, not much sinking, and then look at the end. And I'm seeing suddenly some risks, risk taking. Now, it's not about me, it's about them doing that. Come off the pitch while they're set, and let me talk to you a sec. Can I ask you something? What were you practicing in that? Pardon? No, you know, you wanted me to say that. What other things? Tell me things you... No, no, I'm going to go around you. I'm not going to pick on you. I'm going to want you to tell me. What were you practicing? Pardon? Moving. What moving? Yeah. Was he practicing movement as a target? He did really well, didn't he? What about you? More movement. Magnificent. Anyone else? What were you practicing? Catching it and... Did you do... Where did you spend your entire time, by the way? What could you have done? Could have shifted around the outside. Anyone got any? Go on. Say again. Looking for other people. I tell you what, you can't look at other people and look at the ball at the same time. What makes the ability for you to turn into that space? What do you need to have? Okay? Absolutely. And you need to have that vision. You did really, really well. I tell you what, if you did that for another half an hour, you'd be flying. Well done. Right, okay. Uh, give these a round of I thought they were excellent. Okay, off you go. go. Now, the way we work at this level is you assume nothing. One thing we do do is we look at the game and the technical information we give, they probably have got it anyway. The fact is it was a decision-making game where the target shifted. If the target shifted, one of the scoring boxes would be empty. And their choice is no longer to pass it, but to run it through. And they have to clock whether that's empty or not. If it's full, they'll pass it into the target and go out. What you move on to is this. Oh, my boxes are gone. They play the box game and then they go directional into a goal. And then you watch how improved they are at making the decisions, when to turn, what type of turn, and the type of what part of the foot, etc., they used to turn. I thought, if you think put at the end, as a learning experience to where they were at the beginning, there is no comparison. I thought they were excellent at the end. But, as with all kids, particularly these kids, one thing they need, or three things they need, is a challenge. They need it to be game-related, and they need to take risks. And they should be allowed to make mistakes and take risks. That's the only way they would have got to that end bit. And in 20 minutes, they were stunning. You imagine doing that for another hour and you'll see something spectacular from them. They were excellent. Okay, the last, the last section is whether Steve's going to take it on to under 15, 16s. If you look at the three sections, the younger ones were to do with generic stuff and working on managing the body and the ball. My one is trying to put them into challenging games. Steve's is a functional practice where at the older kids you might be dealing with midfield players or wide players. At 13 and 14... There are no midfield or wide players. They've just got things to move. But at this age, they would be working on that. So you'll see a distinct change, a far more greater focus on positional awareness.
Which ones? No, we're just going to work out to there. Why is he on off? There it is. Hello? Oh, yeah, it's working. Good. Now, we're going to finish off for the last 20, 25 minutes just looking at how we transfer that basic information about turning into a game. Now, as a coach, I can't just go out and do a session in what we would call a functional practice where all they do every time they get it is turn. Because that's not what happens in the game on a Saturday or a Sunday. That's not the help that they need when they get to this level. What we've got to think about doing better now is linking in turning and all that basic movement that Mark did earlier will have a direct transfer into here. The work that Paul was doing about recognizing the space, looking for the best option, that will have a direct transfer into here. But it now has to be linked into the principles of play. So when we get possession of the ball, we would like to score goals. When they get it, we would like to stop them. There are some things we can do and some things we should prioritize that will let us do that more efficiently. Turning at certain times in the game, in certain situations, will be that thing. Other times, it won't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the practice going and we'll just look at it from there. So for organizational purposes, just for the coaches, for us, a functional practice means the relevant number of players on the field in the relevant area. And I'm going to look primarily at a central midfield unit receiving and turning effectively. So what I've got is I've got three attacking central midfield players. Hands up the three attacking central midfield players. Hands up. The three attacking central midfield players. Good. Okay. So they are playing towards the goal with the goalkeeper. This part in here is merely a mechanism for serving the ball. Okay. Now, why are we getting the ball shifting around in here? Their condition, they must have three passes minimum before they release the ball forward. Why are we doing that? Because when you link it into a game context, the midfield players work to get their space when the ball is being shifted around in the defending third. So if it just comes from a static service, the defensive midfield player is marking the player and just looking at a static ball. That's not what happens. So the practice is minimum of three passes, play out into here, just play forward, and we play a normal game. The Greys, I've just said, be realistic, defend properly, try and win the ball back. When you do, try and score. Mark, who turned up late, and so for his punishment, well, not really a punishment, is it? He's going to be the linesman for us for the first bit. If that becomes too easy and they get out all the time, what I might do is just take Mark and stick him in there as an extra attacker, just to make the challenge a bit more appropriate. Is that okay? So what we're going to do, fellas, you know the rules. If it goes over the side, leave it. If you hear me whistle, just stop and try and stop as quickly as you can because we want to look at the picture. Is that okay? Now, we're going to start from here. Remember what you said about your position in relation to the ball. So just get a good starting position back, players. Make it realistic. Because the ball's right up here, look. Hang on. What it, just come this way a few yards. Just push up a little bit because the ball's right up here. Okay, so you know how to get it started. So we'll just let them play and have a couple of goes to make sure they understand the organisation. Ready? Play! Okay, don't worry, start again. Good. 
Keep going. Keep playing. Good. Well done. Go on. Play on. Good. Now relax. It's gone out. Good. Just start from this end again. Yeah, Mark, roll that one down and we can recycle it. Yeah, roll it to me, Mark. Roll it to me. Start from this end. We're off, fellas. Just play live. Good. Well done. And finish if you can. Good. Terrific. Okay, just roll this one in the back of the net as well, out the way. Hang on a second. Just hold it there. Now, from a coaching perspective, if I want to get this set out and get organized, there are some basic things I can do to make it easier. What would be the first thing in here? Well, I'd like them to utilize the space that's available to stretch the one defender so they can keep the ball easier in order to play forwards. So all I'm going to say to you, fellas, is when you get it and shift it, actually try to start to try and stretch him. So if it does go to you, push a bit wider. Good. Bounce it into him. Good. Make a little angle just to support in case. Now look, nice. Now you stay there. Stay there. You don't need to come in. Because if need be, it'll bounce it into there, or if he blocks that pass, he'll stick it across there. So open this area up as best you can, and although he's athletic, he shouldn't get it back too often. Yeah? Is that okay? So in here, think about that, and we'll just start to work from there. Ready? And play. Good. Go on. Well, Nick, nicked it back. Good. Can he finish? Good. Play on. Good. Okay, don't worry about it. Now, so the object of the exercise for us now is not to have a session that is like a demonstration session. It's to show some principles. What's the principle we're establishing here? Well, it's to get a realistic starting situation that will allow us to do the practice. So, I might, for instance, in here, change it to a 4v1 if I thought I needed it. I could make the area bigger. I could do a couple of things. I think you're a bit better than that, fellas, if you shift the ball around. So all I'll say is now, Two passes, and you can look to play forward. Is that okay? Ready, and play. Good. Open yourself up. Good. All right, don't worry about it. That's fine. Good. Just play. Well defended. Good. Just play. Good. Just play. <laughs> and stand still. And stand still. Brilliant. Good. Stand still. <laughs> stand still. Sean, go back where you were. Sorry, no, Mike. Sorry, just go back there. Sean, isn't it? Stay there. No, stay there. Stay where you were. So, Sean, stay there. Centre half, just step in a yard. Step in a yard. <laughs> stay there. Brilliant. Now, as this ball is travelling, what do I want him to do? Now, he's the left footer as well. Well, as it's travelling towards him, he can't do anything with it. I just want him to check the picture in there. Because as it rolls in, if he opens his body up, he already knows that if he touches it there, he might just stick Sean in over there. Now, I'm not a lefty, but... somewhere in that space there and Sean if you're thinking about starting to stretch off that shoulder rather than you coming and killing the space as well then we might just get you straight in in one is that okay does that make sense so what's the message to you three really open the pitch up keep possession when it's traveling do what look forward and if it's on and they push a high line then stick it behind them and get him in and that's fine is that okay? You two think about trying to stretch them a little bit and work off their shoulders if you can. Good. So ball into the, ball into the bottom end. Remember, do the offsides for me in case I make silly runs. Ready? And play. Good. Now, what did he do? Were you watching? Yeah? Hello? Anybody there? Right side is centre half. It was a bit late, but he did it, didn't you? It was almost like a little bit of an afterthought. It's right on top of him, and then he's suddenly doing that. So can you pick that time to do it and look? Good. So just roll the ball back there. That's brilliant. Good. Just roll it into the central one, because that's where it came from. Good. Just got Joel, just put a little bit of pressure on him for me there, like he was. Good. So now, roll it back into his feet, like he was. Good. Open yourself up. Look forward. Good. And stop there. Brilliant. Now. So. Well done. <laughs> one. Well done. That's terrific. So now, like, you might be looking in there, yeah? And you might be looking at that space to get him in, yeah? Now, bearing in mind that the ball's now there, yeah? And he's marking on this side, and your centre forward's here. Where else might this ball go now? Brilliant. It might just go straight in there when he's in. So I want you to keep thinking about those sorts of things, yeah? So now, I'll 
Give, let you out of jail now. Good lad, go and adjust. Go and push him on a bit, Sean. Terrific. Good. Now, you're probably thinking, well, hang on, 10 minutes ago, he said I'm going to work with the central midfield unit in terms of creating space and receiving effectively. Yeah? I can't work with them in isolation from the rest of the practice. So if these aren't doing what I'd want my back players to do, yeah, exploit and penetrate if it's on, if they're not looking to get behind defenders, because merely and simply by doing that movement, what do they do? Well, they start to open up the space in here. And if they're quick enough, they can keep running the shoulders. But at the very least now, they start to stretch, which now makes this area bigger, which now means I can start to work with my three midfield players to start to open up the space for themselves. Because if they're going to do the stuff that Mark Kearney talked about, which is those no-touch turns, they're probably going to need a little bit of space in which to do it. Okay, so roll me the ball in. Come this way, Joel. And play. We're live. Good. Good. Just play on. Play on. Good, you've got time. Good. Good, okay, and relax. Start from that end. Jet. <laughs> Keeper, start from you. Keeper, no. <laughs> There's only one goalkeeper. That's it, start from the top. You roll out to the Greys, and Greys have a bit of possession. Go on, play. Go on, Greys, try and score. Good, can you score? Go on, can you score? Don't be shy. Score. <laughs> Go down, relax. Now, so I've let them have a bit of possession because from the coach's point of view, I actually want the Oranges to have lots of possession. So I've watched to see what they will do. Yeah, they're having lots of touches when they don't need it. So I'm just going to put a condition on you, Grays. When you win it back, you've got 10 seconds to score or just clip it into the end zone. Okay? So 10 seconds to score, we'll just clip it into the end zone. Does that make sense? And if you're not doing it, I'll just count it down. So, just going to make a little adaption. Just going to make a little adaption. Joel, move that central line out about two yards. Yeah, move it out about two yards. Yeah, same on the far side. Yeah, go on, Michael, move that one up. That's brilliant. Okay, I'll give you a little bit more of an angle to work off if you need it. Are you ready? <laughs> Play. Good, keep looking. Good, keep looking. Good, play off him. Good. <laughs> Brilliant. And relax. And relax. So good. Just knock the ball back in there to Danny. Knock it back in to Danny. Good. Just come back in there. Yep. Good. Just come back in. Yeah, just come out where you were. Just come out there. That's brilliant. Now. Yeah. One, just come back where you were. Good. Now look, all I'm gonna to say to you is this. That's okay in there, and it was a picture that was seen in another practice earlier on where we played past the first striker. Yeah? All I want you to do now as a unit is to give yourself a chance. So as that's happening, cause him a problem. Well, that might not cause him a massive problem. What will cause him a bigger problem? Yeah, just drop into here. Good, so start to drag his now. He's already got a problem. Good, and as that happens, push off his shoulder. Go on, terrific. So start to drop in there. Now, if those spaces open up, yeah, Mark him on the outside shoulder like you were, because there was the ball. Terrific. So now if you play it past him with pace, yeah, he can literally, go on, play it past him, he can literally let it run across him and turn it again. That's better. Yeah. He can let it run across his body in there. But you stretch him and drop into there. Yeah? Good. Now, just have the ball back there for me. Good. Now, grey defender. There's your problem. It's going to get played past you into there. So if you see this picture and again in a couple of seconds, what are you going to do? 
Are you going to track him in tight or are you going to come and kill this space? All right, so come and kill the space. That's all right. So that's all he can do. Now, what you might do now, if you think about the work you did earlier, let me take your place. So if that sort of movement causes that sort of problem, where is it going? Right, not there, because what do I really want to do? I want to play forward, don't I? Yeah? So given this space and the fact that he's running him off, if you put the right weight on it and send it across there, go on. I just check there, let it go, and I'm in, and I don't even need a touch now, and we're throwing on a goal. Does that make sense? Good. So ball back into Danny. Now, based on what he does, yeah? So what was your name? Based on what Mike does, that little movement might just get you in and allow you to check your shoulder and turn without even touching the ball. Is that right? If he goes with him, yeah, if he sort of goes with him, if, no, if he goes with him, that ball along your inside shoulder, you can just let it spin and run and play off your striker. So, ball to the centre half. Roll it to Danny and play live. Play. Good. No, it's not on. So go on, play again. Good. Stop. Michael, get the ball. Michael, get the ball. Terrific. Stay there. Good. Just go where you were. Good. Just come this side now. So look, he's gone there. That's brilliant. Go on, because you're there. Because you're right side. No, that's brilliant. You're the right side. Go on. One, do what you did. Do what you did. That's terrific. Go on, do what you did. No, centre half, do what you did. No, Juan, stay there. Centre half. Just get the other side of him where you were. No, Juan. Juan, stand still. Juan, no move out. Stand still. Centre half, go on the other shoulder like you were doing. Stop. Because there's the picture. Now, the principles of play. Where is your best pass now? And who's going to get in? He is. So we're not just going to get fixated on playing in here and turning now. If that picture presents itself, the movements that you did earlier, remember, when you just open the hips and go, there's your movement, there's your pass, and that's brilliant. And he's back in. So, okay. So don't forget to look forward if it's on. Don't forget to keep checking both, and if it's in, get yourself in there. Come back a yard. Back in, into his feet. Good, Good. put pressure on the ball, Joel. And play. Now, if it's not on, you can't do it. Good. If it's not on, don't force it. Play live. Just play live. Good. Now, Grace. Grace, remember what I said? Play realistic so keeps. If you have to come out and slide at his feet and block it, then that's what you have to do. But make it as game-like as possible. So, okay. So if you have to come out and spread and block it, that's terrific. Come and do it for me. Ready? Play out from your end and just get a bit of time on the ball. Play. Linesman, don't forget to stay in line with the players. Good. Five seconds gone. You've only got ten. Can you get it forward or you're going to have to shunt it? Yeah. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Get it and have a shot, Dave. Well done. Turn over. Play on. Good. Shift the ball. Good. Where's your movement? And relax. Just relax. Stand still. Good. Go back where you were. Dave, go back where you were. Good. Come back in where you were. Come back in here. Just there. That's where you were. Just come there. Good. Stay there. Good. Tuck in. Tuck in the yard. Tuck in the yard. Come in the yard. Brilliant. Go there. Pump. Yeah. Just come in the yard. Just drop in where you were. Drop there. Keep going. Keep going. Dave, just there. Half a yard. Go across a bit. Pump. That's where you are. Good. Roll the ball out to him. To Michael. Good. Now, what can you do to help us? So instead of putting a ball in there that's now at risk and we turn it over, what could you do to help us, given this picture? Yeah, go on then. Go and show for it. Your choice, Dave. What are you going to do? Right, now, you don't, now, if he comes, you might have to keep going. Brilliant. Now, look, because of that now, what can you do? To who? Right. Well, if you punt it up there somewhere, we might just end up with a 50-50 like we did. Yeah? So you might now drive it into him with a bit of pace. Yeah? Go on. He's checking. Now, same problem again. Where do I want it, bearing in mind that the pressure is going to come from there? That side. Good. So now, look. You're looking at this picture. He's going to drive it into his feet. Yeah? So that he can do that with his body check. He might have to take a touch to stop it rolling on. 
Now you've got one touch turn in there, you've got your head up and you're driving at the back players. And that's brilliant. And look, if you keep going with them and the centre halves keep going, I'm just going to keep going. Because if they steal back off from this distance, I think I might just fancy a shot, fellas, by the way. Because there's the goal. Yep, so defenders, you've got to come and defend at some stage. Now, what are you defending at this moment? I'm not coaching you, but what are you defending at the moment? Well, you're defending the corner flag. Because here's the ball and there's the goal. Yeah, so just took yourself in a bit. But that's the sort of picture, see what I mean? So you can't go long. He can't turn without touching it like he could have done a few minutes ago because there's no, not as much space behind. But your movement might just open it up to get him in. So ball into Michael. Good, took yourself in there again. Where you were? Back in there. So I forgot your name. What's your name? Malcolm, just get in there, Malcolm. Oh, I should remember you now. Stand up there. Brilliant. So as that ball travels, what's your thoughts? As it comes into him, brilliant, shift him. Good, what are you going to do? So he's going to open up now and drive forward with the ball. As the other two midfield players, what are you going to be thinking about doing? Well, you might be joining in because you're quite advanced. Are you going to go and join in? Bearing in mind that the other two have gone. Or are you going to think about coming in and getting some shape behind the ball? Brilliant, good lad. So go back where you were. Just go back up. Dave, it's your choice whether you track him in. Malcolm, no, Malcolm, don't come any closer. Stay where you were. Look, you've got a big pocket of space there. Stay there. That's it, there. Because he'll find you there. Now, all I've got to do is give him a bit of freedom. So, look, if you have a touch out your feet to get us going live, yeah? So, I make you run. If Dave cheats and goes and blocks that off, what might you do instead? Just give it to his back foot, and he'll turn in one, and then he'll look to play forwards. Problem solved. Okay? Let's go back. Dave, it's up to you. Anything you want, Dave, but come with him. <laughs> Dave, anything you want, but come with him when he plays. Go on, back you go. Get ready. Go on, get back. So all I want you to do is that. Little roll out of your feet and then play live. And as he rolls it, you go live as well. <laughs> play. Good. Go on. Now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going to stop it. I don't really want to, but I'm going to. Why? Why am I stopping it? Not enough pace on the pass, was there? By the time it's got there, I could have had a cappuccino and got back and tackled him. Now, you are English, aren't you? We are renowned for clumping it with a bit of pace. So I want you to stick it in there with a bit of pace. All right? Let him deal with the ball. Let him handle the ball. Same movements and play. Play. Oh, not bad. Go on then, play. <laughs> yeah, not quite that much. <laughs> Good. Shape behind the ball. Good. Play from you, keeper. Ten seconds. Orange is getting and defend. Good. Play. Go on, play live. Five seconds gone. Four. Three. Good, well played, two. Get a finish. Get a finish, Dave, just clip it in. Good, play live. Good, open it up. Terrific. <laughs> Stop, stand still. Now, so as a coach, what am I thinking about now? Because we said this is going to be for the players and the coaches, so as a coach, what should I be thinking about now? Right, are they still doing the things we spoke about at the start of the session? And what did I ask the front players to do? Think about trying to exploit spaces behind. Now, Wan, to be fair, isn't doing too bad. So it's um, Sean, isn't it? Sean has not checked his shoulder once in all the time that ball has moved. He's now got fixated on just watching that. And I saw him in the practice up there, and he was better at doing this. So what I want you to think about, Sean, is that ball shifting, and he's watching to see where the ball's going then you just keep checking him, see where the ball's moving, and just keep thinking about trying to get ways of getting behind him if you can. Yeah? Now, if he drops off you a long way, it's fine just to come and stand here and show up. Yeah? Because what might you do if you know he's really tight to you now? Spin and get in there. Brilliant. But if you don't keep checking to see where he is, you're not going to know. So I've got to go back and revisit that as the coach, else I've mentioned it to them, so I'll tick it on my list of things to do, but they haven't really understood it because they're not doing it. So I haven't taught them anything. I've just mentioned it to them in passing. And I want them to understand, and I want you to prioritise that, if at all possible, getting behind them cheap. Okay? So shift the ball and play. Last few minutes. Good. Go on, you can score. Good. Go on, Dave, finish it. Good. Go on and play. And play. What are you going to do? Make the area big. Go on. Play. Good. <laughs> and relax. Terrific. Brilliant. That's fine. Well done. That's great. Now, just get the ball back to your feet. Just get the ball back into your feet here like you were. 
Good. That's it. Just get it there. Good. Now, that's it. Just come and get it here. Face up like you were, because that's where you got it, weren't it? It's brilliant. No, go on. You've done brilliant. Just come in. Come here and be me. I'm having a problem with him, am I? <laughs> come on, Mark. Good. Now, it's actually happening in the flow of the practice, yeah? He's got a couple of choices now, and I'm not going to say one thing is better than the other at this moment in time. Because he could, for instance, under pressure there, do what? He could just bounce it out, bounce it out, and we'll look to play there. But within the flow of the stuff I'm doing, he's done okay. Yeah? So what I'm going to say is, look, it's tight in here. The last thing I want you to do is actually come in and bring another defender in that area. So if you see that, bearing in mind he's actually got support behind the ball, yeah, just pull away. Because if he does set it back, he'll stick you right in behind him again and he's going to get done again. So it's your choice now. Where do you want to go? No, it's up to you. I'm not telling you. It's up to you. All right, you want to go back there. Brilliant. Keep threatening the shoulders. Good. Don't get dragged in because he don't need you. Now, the ball's come into his feet and he's killed it. And he's checked his shoulder. And as it's come in, because of this, he's just started to go half a yard. So what have you chosen to do? He's had a touch, one touch. He's realised he's got half a yard. He's gone bump. Multiple touches now, two touches, and he's turned and he's now facing up. Now, instantly, he's done that. Yeah, he's got that as a safety net. He's chosen to do it here, so that's fine. English players wouldn't do it. They'd set it back and lump it. Argentinian players would probably try and get out of trouble with a, with a clever turn. He's done brilliant. Now he's faced up. What's he doing now? What's he going to do as soon as he's now faced up? And he's looking forward. Well, he's going to look for the best pass. Yeah, where's the best pass? Might get him across the front of him, because the defender's not marking quite right. So come across him, centre half. No, stay there, Sean. Central, yeah. So that's a slightly different picture now. So having done that, it might be that he just goes back into there, and, and what? Malcolm, and what? As the ball goes past him there. So as the ball goes there, what's your name? And Mike does that, which he can't resist doing, what are you going to do? Straight in there off his first touch, get it that side of him, and you're back into that other situation. Yeah, that's happened. What's your job now? So, Michael, come driving on. What's your job now, having passed it from deep? Are you going to try and get in advance of the ball? No. Sit back. Come in now, you be there, because you're coming from deep. So, you can be, what are you going to be doing? He's doing that. He's squared up now. Brilliant. Now, you're thinking about joining in. And based on your movement, it will affect what you do. Does that make sense? So what we've done, we now get you. You've done a nice little multiple touch turn. That's terrific. Yeah, you've played in. Now you work off that. Receive it this side of the midfield players. You might choose to use him as a decoy and turn. You might set it back and spin and go. What's going to determine that? Brilliant. He's just said what is going to make his decision on whether or not he sets it back or uses the ball to spin him and turn him himself is where he is. So if he marks him on that shoulder, what might you do? He's going to do that. But if he gives him half a yard and goes there, he's probably going to fancy setting it back and spinning and going. So that's his decision making on whether or not he can turn in that situation. Brilliant. Get the ball, rattle it into his feet and we'll go live off there for the last couple of minutes. Get the ball. Translate for the hard of hearing. Get the ball. Come here. On the ball. Face up. Like you just did. So you've just done that great little turn in there, which was magnificent. You've got half a yard. Terrific. Now, half a bit closer. Touch out of your feet now. Put it in there with pace. We play live. Play. Go on, play live. Play live. Good. Well done. Good. Good. Play from the keeper. Two minutes to play. Ten seconds to score, Grays. Good. Keep your shape. Good. Can you finish? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Serve from this end. Last attack. Serve from down here. Right, put the bits together, fellas. We're playing live. Good, we're playing live. Stop. Why am I stopping it? Come on, because you can just watch the practice. 
Or you can watch what's going on within the practice. Why am I stopping it? What didn't he do? What didn't you do, Dan? He didn't look up. When the ball travelled, he never bothered checking. So he's just recognised that himself. I can't just mention it and forget it. As the practice builds, I've got to keep going back to the fundamental bits, the bits at the start. We did the three youngsters without a ball about scanning and seeing pictures. He's got to see pictures. He ain't going to see pictures fixated on the ball. So that, as the ball's travelling, means he gets a touch and now he might select something in advance of the ball. Yeah, so well done for recognising it. Get ready to play. Last attack. Play! Good lad, what are we going to do? Good. And relax. Good, and in you come. Just come here, fellas. Well done. Just walk over this way. Brilliant. Juan, just come there for me. Good. Now, the last little bit of play then when we just stopped it. We'd previously spoken to him about him, about what would his choice be when the ball got played into him. And he said, I might set it back, or I might look to turn based on where the defender is. What did he do that time? Don't know. <laughs> didn't see it. <laughs> Honestly, he was on the pitch. You turned with it, didn't you? He chose to turn with it. He couldn't see a pass back because the midfield player was screening his midfield player. So he's had a touch and killed it. Yeah? Invited the pressure and then turned across his body and ended up playing forwards. So he's just now chosen, rather than setting it back because the picture's different, he knows now that he's going to have to do something a bit different with the ball. So he's chosen to do one of those clever turns that allows him to play forward. So that's terrific. What was good in there? Well, they still tried to activate the movements behind the ball that we'd spoken about. So for me as a coach now, I need to know if they understand the work we've done. So, what was the role of the back players? What was you? Make space. Look forward as the ball's travelling and look for the most beneficial or advanced pass you can find. Where might that be if it's on? Where did you like it, Sean, if you could get it? Yeah, or where else? Where's the best place? Yeah, in behind the centre half. So if he's marks on the wrong shoulder, Michael said, I'll stick him in there and we'll put him in. This is just a basic principle of play that I need to enforce if the midfield players are going to work to receive and turn effectively. Because if we get the pitch compacted, they're never going to do any of those no-touch turns. Why not? Because if they let it run, it's just going to bang into the next player. So it will never be there for them. So they've got to apply that principle of spreading and stretching so that we can start to work. So that sort of picture by looking long. Front players, what did I ask you to do? What did I ask you to do, Sean, Juan? What did I ask you to do? Think about going where first if you could. In behind them first if they could. If not, then think about coming and showing up. But try and do that because it might stretch them. Now that gets us on to our midfield players. What was the first thing I asked you to do as a three? All get close together and hold hands? Or spread out and make the area big? Yeah, spread out and make the area big. Because if we make it big and they come with us, then we play past them in the spaces and we link off the strikers. If we make it big and they don't come with us, Malcolm, what happens? So you drop short, didn't you? The midfield player can't come with you because he's screening the back players. What happens? Danny rolls the ball into... Malcolm, sorry. You don't have a look like him, by the way. The ball gets rolled into you, and what did you do? You check your shoulder, there's lots of space. How many touches did you need? How many did you have? Got rolled in from Danny, didn't it? You went, lots of space, let it run, play forward. Don't need a touch. If you haven't got quite that much space, what happened the next time when you was off the back shoulder? What happened? How many touches did you need then? Because there was a bit less space behind you. You had one, didn't you? He's rattled it into you again. You've gone space, bump, turn, play. What happens when you haven't got any space, despite all that hard work, because they're defending well? What might you have to do? You've done it over there. Or, what did you choose to do? Do a clever turn. Now, Noddy spoke earlier, Paul spoke earlier, about letting them experiment and make mistakes. We are, as a nation, English people I'm talking about now, not Americans, we are almost anally retentive about our back players not trying to be creative or clever or get themselves out of trouble. If in doubt, put it in row Z, let them have a set play. Yeah? Well, if you go to other places, if you go to places like the Balkans, the Croatians and all of that, Africans, South Americans, they will let their back players, if it's the right thing to do, try and get out with the turns and the tricks just the same as their midfield players. So he's chosen to do it and he's done it properly. How do I know? 
Because when he did it, he got himself free and he could play forward. So it was a good decision. Maybe not the decision I would have made, because I've got two left feet, but it was a good decision. So now I'm thinking, well, do they understand those principles? Yeah, because that's my job as the coach. What I've also got to do is keep going back to the building blocks and checking that they understand. So right at the end, Danny, what didn't you do? Didn't look up. Now, it might be that he just forgets it once, but if I watch him and he forgets it three or four times, then he hasn't learnt the issue. So as a coach to make him better, I've got to revisit it with him and revisit it and revisit it and maybe try and do it in different ways if I have to because that's what they need to learn. My job as the coach, help them get better. So are there any... Well done, fellas, by the way. So a quick round of applause for the troops. Hey, good fellas. Did they get dirty, those gloves? Did they get dirty?